Okay, in this little talk, I want to uh, talk a little bit more about symbolism in the book of Revelation. Uh, if you listen to the first sermon, I already began to introduce the importance of symbolism for the book of Revelation. I just want to fill that out a little bit. Um, one of the things, if you recall the first sermon, I said that Revelation is a letter, a prophecy, and an apocalypse. And that word apocalypse, of course, is just a revelation. So it's an original context, it's revealing something. And I talked about what that reveals. But I also mentioned briefly that um, that word apocalyptic is used also for a particular kind or genre of literature that was uh, fairly common in a few hundred years before the time of Jesus and a couple hundred years after the time of Jesus. And Revelation, I said, is one example of that particular kind of genre that people now call apocalyptic or apocalyptic literature. And that particular kind of literature has certain kind of characteristics um, that are very common to it. So in apocalyptic literature, for instance, um, there's some kind of a heavenly message that someone receives. They take a journey to heaven and receive a message. An angel comes to them and reveals this message to them. But that's one of the common factors in this kind of literature. But another typical characteristic of apocalyptic literature is symbolism. Now, every book in the Bible has symbolism and every language has symbolism. And every time you know, people speak, there's often something symbolic. But apocalyptic literature is full of symbolism. And so it's very important when we read a book like that to take the symbolism seriously. And, and as I said, what scares some people is if we say it's symbolic, and not literal, people think, oh, then it doesn't have any meaning. If it doesn't have a literal meaning, then it doesn't mean anything. But of course, that's not true. We all use symbolic language, and we all understand that it communicates certain ideas, even if it's not literal. <clears throat> and some people think that, oh, when we read the Bible, if we can possibly understand it literally, then we ought to understand it literally, and we only interpret it symbolically if the literal interpretation seems impossible. But once again, especially for the book of Revelation, I don't think that's a helpful generalization because in Revelation, symbols dominate. And so what's important is to think through um, what do these symbols mean and how does symbolism <clears throat> work and what are they meant to communicate? So for instance, one in the book of Revelation that we will eventually get to when we get to the end of the series um, there's this kind of vision of the new heavens and the new earth. And one of the things that is said is that there is no more sea. No more sea. Uh, most of us enjoy going to the seaside. And so the idea of an earth with no sea to visit and no beach and no waves and that kind of thing seems like that doesn't seem any fun. Is that literal? There's no more sea? Well, no. It's a symbol for something. All through the Bible, the sea is used to symbolize disorder and chaos, okay? And you see a lot of these images in the Bible of the sea and the disorder and the waters are moving and waves and so forth. And then God comes and brings order to the chaos, order to the disorder, okay? And especially in the book of Revelation, you have these images of the beast coming out of the sea. And so in Revelation, as often in ancient literature, the sea symbolizes something negative, disorder and chaos and so forth. And so when at the end of Revelation, it says no more sea, it doesn't mean literally no more large bodies of water. It means that the disorder is totally overcome, chaos is defeated, and God has brought complete order to his creation. It's a symbol that actually communicates something, but not a literal meaning. And so again, Revelation is full of that. One of the most obvious examples of that is with the numbers and, and even a short reading of Revelation, people will see the number seven and how important the number seven is. So um, <clears throat> there's seven letters to the seven churches. There's seven blessings throughout 
the book of Revelation, um, there's these cycles of seven, seven judgments, and then another cycle of seven judgments, and another cycle of seven judgments. There's the, uh, the seven spirits of God or the sevenfold spirit of God. And so the number seven as a symbol is used all throughout the book of Revelation. And so we have to ask ourselves, is this, how literal is this supposed to be? Is it always literally seven, or does the seven point to something else? <clears throat> um, uh, for instance, here's, here's an interesting case. In Revelation chapter 12, uh, it talks about a time, times, and a half a time. Time singular times, maybe two, and then a half a time. And so most people think time one times two, a half is a half of one, three and a half. Three and a half is half of seven, okay? But some people think of that as literally three and a half times, of course, what the time is. Three and a half weeks, three and a half months, three and a half years, what time is being talked about. But very probably it's not literally three and a half periods of time, but the point of three and a half is it's, it's not seven. Seven is completion, fulfillment. Three and a half is just saying this is a limited time. It's a controlled time. That particular kind of time doesn't fill the story. It's, it's limited. It's three and a half. It's less than seven. But very probably, that doesn't mean literally three and a half, whatever, years, or months, but it's, it's a symbol that has meaning, but not literal meaning. <clears throat> time is under God's control, is one of the thing, themes that's going to be communicated in Revelation. And again, you can just see the series of symbols throughout Revelation that mean something, but not literally. I already talked about the sword coming out of Jesus' mouth. Is that a literal sword? Well, it's as I said, it's, it's a word of God, not a physical sword coming from his mouth. A painter shouldn't paint that, Jesus, and this is what Jesus looked like. It communicates something, but not a literal meaning. You have these images of, of angelic characters and beast characters with seven horns and different heads, and you have this image of full of eyes, you know, underneath and around and everywhere full of eyes. Does that mean this creature literally has eyes everywhere? Or does being full of eyes symbolize complete knowledge, seeing everything? <clears throat> In Revelation chapter 12, there's this image of a third of the stars falling to the earth. Now, of course, if you think about that literally, you realize that can't be literal. I mean, there's literally billions and billions of stars, all of them are much huger than the earth is, they cannot all fall to the earth. Okay? It's not literal, the four stars don't literally fall to the earth and you have to ask yourself, what do these images mean? <clears throat> now, of course, we're not just left to our own resources to figure this out. Uh, I mentioned that there is no more sea. How do we know that's symbolic and what does that symbol mean? Well, we can read the Old Testament and see how that image of the sea is used in the Old Testament. We can see how the sea is used symbolically in the book of Revelation. And so there's, there are the pieces that we can put together um, and, you know, following the trail of the story and how words are used before. Most of these symbols, we can get an idea of what it's pointing to. Um, but once again, all I'm saying is that um, in reading Revelation, we need to take the symbols seriously. They mean something, even if the meaning isn't literal. Uh, and I just don't want anyone to be afraid that, oh, you know, here at Communitas, we, we're not taking the Bible seriously because we're just saying it's symbolic. It's not just a symbol. The symbol communicates important truth, uh, and we can get that if we're following the trail of the story. So keep that in mind. When you read Revelation, it's going to be very symbolic, and we can figure it out with a little bit of help. <clears throat>